Welcome back. Today, we'll be working on the back box of our pinball machine. This is where our back glass monitor, the dot matrix display, and the speakers will be mounted. Let's go! We start by cutting the top of the back box. Followed by the bottom. We had already cut the sides way back in one of the first videos. Then, we start putting it all together, beginning with attaching the bottom to the sides, first with pre-drilling, and then attaching using two and a half inch screws. With the sides attached to the bottom, we attach the top. And a quick break to check the square, and back to it. With the box constructed, it was time to move on to the panel that will hold the screens and speakers. I started by putting the box down on the remaining plywood and tracing out the shape, noting measurements as I go. Then we moved to cutting it out. And with the cutting done, we dry fit everything. It's a pretty perfect fit. It's actually so tight that I need to sand it a little to make it work. Much better. Then it was time to put it all together. It was so tight that I originally tried to use a mallet to get it positioned correctly. That didn't work and I started to worry about breaking the box. So I decided to loosen the screws of the box and position it that way. With the back in position, I moved on to putting the screws in, starting with the bottom, then more checking of the positioning, and then back to it. When the bottom's done, we move on to the top. And now you get to witness me make the mistake of putting screws into the sides. The problem here is I didn't take into account the location of the screws relative to where the cutouts for the screens and speakers will be. I'll realize this later, but for now, we'll move on. Now we'll move on to getting a rough idea of where each of the screens and speakers will go in the back box. We'll start with the back glass monitor, then the DMD screen, and finally the speakers. I have links to all the parts used in the description of this video. Then we move on to the actual placement by making sure things are centered. After that, I mark the ends before working on the up and down measurements. I didn't really have a plan here as far as placement. I was just looking for a layout that I thought looked good. Then I pulled the monitor out and worked on centering and marking the DMD screen. In the end, I marked it too wide, which you'll see a little later. Then I moved on to marking the speakers. Marking only the inside of the speaker mount as that is all that needs to be cut out.
Then it was back outside to permanently mark everything. Wrongly, of course. If you look closely, the DMD screen hole is way too wide. After marking everything, the first cuts were the speaker cutouts using a hole saw, which I quickly realized my mistake in the side screws when I hit one trying to drill the hole. Look for the spark. Yeah, whoops, almost lost the whole back box off the saw horses. Then it was on to the DMD screen hole. Again, way too wide, and you can see it when I mount the screen here. About an inch too wide on either side. Not sure how that happened, even as I'm making this video. Then I quickly realized there was no way to get the saw in to cut the back glass hole. So I removed the back and cut it. What I don't show in this video is the little notch I had to make to be able to access the monitor controls on the bottom of the monitor if ever needed. Now we skip ahead a little and see our dry fit of the back glass monitor. Followed by the construction of our homemade monitor mount using some half inch plywood we had laying around. After dry fitting, reaming out holes, dry fitting some more, reaming holes out more. and more dry fitting, we finally got the mount attached to the monitor. followed by getting some spacers installed to be able to attach the mount to the back box.
And finally, we're ready for the glass on the front. For our back box, we're going to use a nice sheet of plexiglass. We start by trimming at the size. Ooh, look at that satisfying dry fit. Then, it's time to carefully drill the speaker holes. I was totally not expecting this to work at all. I thought for sure I would crack the plexiglass and be back out at the store getting more. But, it ended up coming out really clean. With that done, I taped off the screens. This is where I make up for the mistake with the DMD screen, and any other minor imperfections with my cuts or fit. In the next video, we're going to paint the untaped areas black to match the interior of the back box, and to give it a nice clean built-in look. The glass taped, I went ahead and temporarily attached the speakers so that the holes would already be there after paint, and I wouldn't have to worry about messing it up. You can probably see that I did put some wood filler in the screw holes on the back box. I didn't do this on the main cabinet, but decided to do it on the back box for a little more of a one-piece look. After that, it's time to sand it all. Okay, that's all for this one. This turned out to be a pretty long video. Join us next time when we'll paint and stain the pinball machine. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And hit that notification bell to keep up to date.